When I was up at MPG in Chicago, I made a lot of new friends. One of them was Brigham Cook. He goes by Brig. Now, don't worry if you don't capture all the information on his card. Uh, I will put that in the video description. This is one of the 3D printed blanks that Brigham made. He does sell these on his Etsy store. It's got a really cool wavy pattern. Uh, and once he makes the mold on his 3D printer, he then fills it with resin and puts it in his pressure pot. We're gonna turn this today. And I've got a really nice antique brass cigar kit that I think will just set this blank off. I found the center of my blank. I've got it marked, punched, and it's already in my vise. My bit's chucked up, and you'll notice this lighter area here. Um, I just finished drilling one of these uh, 3D cast blanks a few minutes ago, and it left this residue all over my bit. And I ended up taking a toothbrush and some uh, acetone and scrubbing the bit to get, get it off because I didn't want to change the diameter of the bit with having all of that cake to the outside of it. It, it really sticks to the bit. I'm guessing uh, it's the PMMA that, or whatever the resin is that's used to make the uh, mold. And I think when it, when it gets hot, and the bit obviously gets hot when it drills, it gets sticky and it sticks to uh, my bit. So we're gonna keep an eye on that because I don't want to um, burnish the inside of my blank and make the holes larger than they need to be because then my tubes are not going to fit nicely in the blank. I finally reached the limit of my bit. Uh, I cannot go any deeper into the blank uh, without raising the table uh, and lowering the bit into the blank to finish drilling the hole. Uh, we're gonna let this cool for a little bit because it is very hot, uh, and then we'll raise the table and finish drilling the blank. I've got the table raised and the bit is uh, gonna start inside of the blank. You wanna make sure you get a good grip on your, uh, your pin vise when you do this. Uh, because you don't want that uh, bit to catch and basically start spinning it around uh, and possibly hurt yourself. This actually worked out better than the last blank because if I clean it off, you can see uh, I don't have anything sticking to the bit. Uh, that means that uh, the bit did not get hot inside of the blank uh, and nothing got burnished to the bit. So I'm happy about that. Uh, let me get it out of the vise. And we'll clean the dust out of the inside of it. And now we'll head over to the table and we'll get it marked and cut to length. There's a little bit of the resin that sort of um, melts to the uh, blank right there. It comes right off with a fingernail. We'll clean it out with our brush. And we've got a nice cut on our blank. And we are ready to glue tubes into these blanks. I went ahead and moved through gluing the tube into the blank and squaring the end of the blank. I've shown that in so many videos uh, and I'm just trying to kind of shorten my videos a tiny bit. Uh, that process for me hasn't changed in years. So if you're interested in seeing how I go about gluing my tubes into my blanks and squaring my blanks, uh, please go back and check out one of the videos uh, prior to this one and you will see that process in its entirety. I'm gonna start with the body blank. We'll get it shaped and then we'll go after it with the micro mesh, polish it up, hit it with the buffing wheels and uh, very quickly these blanks will be ready uh, to be pressed into a kit. These are super simple to turn. They turn like hot butter and uh, yeah, I highly recommend trying one out if you haven't yet. I've got the blank turned down, and I like how the pattern is really starting to emerge. It's very, very nice. You'll probably notice some grooves in the blank. I'm not sure how well they show up in the camera. I couldn't see these until I turned the lathe off. I think what I did is I bumped my tool against the bushing and damaged the edge of the tool because I was very careful in taking very light cuts. And I think that's what gave me that little groove. So I'm gonna start with some 400 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna try to clean that up. Then I'll come back with some 600 and we'll follow that with uh, the micro mesh to see if we can't remove those grooves and uh, 
polish this blank up, get it looking really nice. I don't want to go with an aggressive grit paper because I turned this down so close to the blanks. I mean, I mean the bushings that uh, you know I don't want to take it below the bushings. Sanding did a nice job. It cleaned up all of those little grooves in the blank. Got a nice smooth blank from end to end. Feels great. Um, I will tell you that the 400 wasn't quite enough. So I did back up to 320, but I was very careful not to sand too aggressively. And I have a really nice surface uh, between the bushing and the blank. I'm going to go ahead now and micro mesh this and uh, should give it a, a huge, should make a huge difference in the appearance of the blank. Micro meshing is complete. I'm gonna go ahead now, put a little wax on this blank and we'll set it aside. We'll turn the cap blank and uh, when we get it to the same point, we'll buff them both right before we assemble them into a pin kit. I'm using a little bit of Renaissance wax. I have way more than I need on my finger. I just dipped it in the jar. Uh, it doesn't take this much, but I like to apply it with my finger because you know, your finger really has no abrasive uh, properties to it. You know, not like a piece of uh, paper towel or something. So it's going to allow you to spread the uh, wax and to work it into the blank without causing any detriment to the blank. What I'm going to do is normally I would uh, wipe my finger off and then come back and um, you know rub the blank. Well actually I'm going to do that right now and the idea is I'm just trying to help work the wax in and uh, make it dry. I keep wiping my finger off on a paper towel and then you'll start to feel the blank kind of tug on your finger, your skin a little bit it doesn't hurt, it doesn't burn, but once you feel it start to tug, you know that wax has worked in enough and you're ready to uh, take this to the buffing wheels. I've got my cap blank chucked up and I'm ready to turn it, but before I do, I want you to notice I've got three dots here and four dots here. Now the reason why I did that is with cigar pens, the bushings are four different sizes and if you do not get the proper size bushing in the proper location, when you go to assemble your pen, it's just not going to work. And at that point, it's way too late. So what I did on the body blank, which is already off the lathe, at the nib end, I put a single dot. At the center band end of the body blank, I put two dots. This is the center band end of the cap or the lower part of the cap. That's three dots. And this is the opposite end of the cap where the clip goes. That's four dots. That way, anytime I want to uh, set up a uh, cigar pin or a a couple of blanks to turn into cigar pins. I can lay the blank out in the proper order I want it, nib end, or I'm sorry, body end, cap end, and then I can just take my bushings, one, two, three, four, pop them right in, and I'm not gonna worry about having any issue uh, with aligning my bushings. Now, if this works out well for me, uh, this is probably gonna rub off after a while because it's just permanent marker on steel. I probably will grab my Dremel tool, come back and just take um, some type of a little ball a uh, bit and just put four dots in here, three dots in here, two and one in the other bushings. And I think that's going to help because if you're like me, I've already messed up two pins by putting these in the wrong position. So this is going to be a huge help. I am going to turn this blank. I'll turn it and film it. But if it turns as smooth as the body blank and I have no issues, um, I'm not going to show the turning on camera because uh, it's just repetitive and boring. We'll come back and show it to you once I'm completed with the turning. Cap blank is complete. Um, I noticed there's still a few grooves. I tried cleaning my tool up to get rid of those, but uh, I didn't do a great job. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll just treat this one like we did the body blank. I'm gonna sand it uh, with my discs just to kind of clean it up. And I'll show a little bit of that on camera, but I won't, I won't show the whole sanding process because it is rather boring. Now, if you decide to start using your drill and discs, uh, hook and loop discs to sand, You've got to be very careful because you can remove a lot of material quickly. So it's a very light touch and you just want to kind of, you, you can shape your blank to make sure, you know, if you feel this way and you find any tool marks, you can shape them out, but you want to be super careful not to get too aggressive because you will destroy a blank very quickly. To clean my blank up, I'm going to start with 320, then I'll jump to 400 and finally 600. Sanding with the discs went great. The blank feels amazing. It is smooth from end to end with no divots. Those little divots are tool marks where your tool will dig in a little deeper at one spot than another. It happens a lot of time when you transition between one material to another. And uh, using my discs, I was able to sand those smooth to where I have a really nice transition from end to end of the blank. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and micro mesh. We are finally ready for assembly. We're gonna start with the body blank. And I'm gonna pop the nib into one end, one of my turning bushings into the other, and we're ready to press this. Always take your time with pressing. I like to rotate my blanks a little bit just to make sure everything lines up so I can keep an eye on all sides. There we go. Got a really nice tight fit. Looks amazing. We are ready to press the transmission component into the back of the pin. You always want to remove the transmission before you press this in, but then you're going to notice you've got these little fine threads on there. If I put that against the ram of my press and press it in, I stand a chance of damaging those. So make yourself one of these scrap piece of, you can use wood. This just happened to be acrylic that I had. I drilled a hole slightly larger than the diameter of the threads, but not so large that it goes over the little shoulder on that piece. So I'm gonna be pressing against the shoulder and my threads are gonna be completely protected from the ram of my press. Once again, you wanna be very careful when you press this together. I'm gonna to rotate the pin again just to keep an eye on all sides of it. There we go. We accomplished that, turned out really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and attach my transmission. When you attach something that's threaded, place it up against the threads and turn it in the opposite direction. I'm turning it counterclockwise until it clicks once. That way you know your threads are aligned, then you can go ahead and turn it in the proper direction to tighten it. These threads are so fine, you do not want to take a chance of damaging them. I'm wiping a little bit of the grease off my finger from the transmission. It gets all over the pin while I'm showing it and makes it look kind of bad, but there we go. I'm going to slide the ink refill in, put the spring on, and once again, we're gonna turn once in the opposite direction until we get the click. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten her down. And you can see, we're able to turn the transmission either direction and it will eject the pin, but it retracts right in the middle of its, of its spin. All right, let me lay this down. Let's take a look now at our cap. And once again, we're going to use a bushing on the back end of the cap. I've got this nice little trim ring that goes into the other end. We'll get it started. Just take your time with pressing. You don't want to destroy a blank when you've made it this far. There we go. That was perfect. Oh, beautiful. We got a great transition there. Now I'm gonna take my cap and always inspect your blank. When I look at it, this end here, I don't like as much. So that's where I'm gonna put the cap. Or I'm sorry, the clip to kind of hide the side that I'm not as, as uh, crazy about. You can use this to hide blemishes. I have no blemishes in this blank. It's just, uh, I think the other side looks a little better. And always be careful when you're pressing this together. Keep your clip in the position you want it because it will move. All right, now that's nice. All right. The last thing to remember is when you're assembling a pin, you want the pin to look nice when it's laying on a desk. So don't snap it together like this. Close the ink refill, align the pin, and then press it together. That way when it's laying on a desk and you can see it's off a little bit, let's readjust it. There we go. When it's laying on a desk, it's gonna lay and look nice. Always assemble with the ink retracted. I'm real happy with that pin. It's got a few fingerprints on it because I got the grease from the transmission on my, uh, on my hands, but I can wipe those off with a nice soft cloth. Uh, they'll dis the fingerprints will disappear and I'll have a beautiful pin. 3D printed blanks are really fun to turn. The material turns very easily. They give you some really cool designs. So if you haven't tried a 3D printed blank yet, you should give one a try. And if you're interested in one of my buddy Briggs blanks, I will put all of the information for his Etsy store in the video description and you can check it out and see if he has something you may be interested in turning. 
I really hope you enjoyed this video. I want everybody out there to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.